This light switch has no wires or electricity running to it, and yet it can control nearly any light fixture in a room. And I know what you're thinking, obviously it must run on a battery, but it doesn't have a battery either. It has no external power source. The unit is totally self-contained. So where does it get its power from? And the answer is, it makes its own. I was walking through a job site the other week with my friend Harrison Peacock, owner of CCS Triangle Electric here in Raleigh, North Carolina. He was showing me the smart lighting array that he and his client had designed for the client's house. This cool product was one of several things in the house that impressed me. I thought it was so interesting that I figured I'd make a video on how some of this smart lighting tech works. So that's what we're talking about today on The Honest Carpenter Show. Okay, so back to this switch. It jumped out at me when the client demonstrated it on the back porch. It's from a company called Run Less Wire. As I said, the switch really has no power source. Or it's more accurate to say that it is the power source. The switch operates on kinetic energy. Every time you click the rocker, the switch produces just enough power to send a signal to your light fixtures to turn them on or off. And amazingly, it's even multifunctional in that it can dim lights as well based on where you push on the rocker. I'm a carpenter and I've barely dabbled in electrical work throughout the years, so I was really surprised when Harrison showed me this thing and some of the other things throughout the house. But I know this tech isn't new to everyone. Some of this stuff, in fact, has been around for years. It's part of the whole internet of things. Companies like Philips and Lutron have been pushing the boundaries of smart lighting for a long time. This was just my first chance to wrap my head around the functionality of it, so I thought I'd do a real quick rundown of how it works for newcomers. Smart lighting is essentially lighting that uses software and Wi-Fi to give you greater control over how your lights work and function throughout the day and night. For instance, Harrison's clients have kids, and their eldest is a smart guy who's very tech savvy, and he wanted to design a light array that would let them control light color throughout the house. To do this, they use Philips Hue bulbs, which offer just that function. The clients can manually set the color palette for lighting in any room. They can have blues in the kitchen and bathrooms, green and pink in the bedroom and master suite, and of course, they can have every shade of traditional yellow and white light wherever they like. Furthermore, they can control all of these things from their smartphones. A fairly simple app interface lets them change the color palettes in particular rooms at random. They can also control all the lighting in the house simultaneously, turning everything off at once when they leave, or activating just the exterior lights to come on and go off at nightfall and dawn. Or when they're traveling, they can even program lights to randomly flip on and off to create the impression that people are home, a la home alone. That's the benefit of smart lighting. It gives you almost endless control and choice of how you want the lighting in your home to operate. It's not as straightforward as traditional lighting though, in that it does need the ability to communicate with your phone and sometimes other appliances. It does this through a bridge, which is basically just a hub that utilizes your internet connection to program and maintain control over your smart light equipment. This does typically put some of the burden of programming on the client. Harrison is a great electrician and he can wire anything. And if you're going to install a smart light array, you should certainly contact a good forward thinking company like CCS Triangle. But that said, he leaves a lot of the choice settings up to the client. You have to go into these apps yourself and group lights into zones and create the functionality and controls that are particular to you and the way you want things to work. I always say this is exactly the sort of stuff that you don't want to pay your contractor to do. They may be willing to do it, but you have to realize that it costs them time and you have to be willing to pay them their rate for that time no matter what it entails. So let your electrician handle the complex wiring and heavy lifting. But much of this phone-based stuff can be done by yourself. And you're probably wise to take the time to do it, if only to understand the systems better. Also, this is burgeoning technology. We're seeing a boom every year of new companies jumping into the market, presenting new lights and switches and features. And while they often tout their compatibility with existing technology, it's not always bug-free. For instance, Harrison's clients had a terrible time with some of the alternate brand switches that were supposed to control the lights. These products fell in the Friends of Hue family, which means that they're compatible with Philips Hue's excellent color-changing lights. But real-world testing in several rooms revealed numerous flaws. Lights wouldn't dim like they were supposed to, or there might be a serious lag between switch operation and the light activation. And router outages could cause the switches to essentially lose their programming. They'd have to be reprogrammed in the app each time this happened. Harrison's clients contacted the company only to find out that these were known bugs and things that the company was working on. That can be the downside of a market explosion. Not every company is up to speed yet, and yes, there's some territorialism at play as well. A lot of these issues get addressed, but it can be frustrating for homeowners when newly installed hardware just doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. 
And I'm gonna make you mad here because I'm not gonna say which brands in particular were experiencing difficulties. I'm not gonna do this because the market moves so fast and what applies today may not apply tomorrow. Problems they're having right now may be ironed out in a week. Your best bet is to research brands heavily. If you're going with a smaller brand, the burden is on you to find out how the world is reacting to it. Don't put the burden on your contractor. They often just can't control all these things. Good electricians like Harrison are inevitably going to steer you to the bigger, more established brands. As I mentioned, Philips is an industry leader for the actual lights, and the clients experience virtually no problems with their products, even when stress tested. Lutron is a leader for smart switches. Harrison especially likes their Caseta line, which has a ton of functionality. And one other very important thing to note here is that none of this tech is cheap. From lights to switches, no matter what brand you're buying, you have to be prepared to pay drastically more than you would for traditional hardware. A classic single pole toggle switch runs you just a few bucks, but one of these wireless switches from Runless Wire is over 60 bucks, including shipping. The functionality you're gaining with smart lighting has to be a priority if you want these products. If you want to have that broad remote control over the lighting in your house, be prepared to shell out more. It's an investment. Harrison really recommends a sensible approach of making the product match your needs. For instance, he's a really big fan of these Philips sensors, especially around stairs. When you pass by them, they light up the staircase instantly. And a couple minutes after you're gone, they turn the lights off. No hassle. It keeps you safe, and you can essentially rig a whole house this way if you like. The kinetic switch was a good fit for this strip lighting because they could just plug the lights into an existing outlet. The switch and the lights could communicate through a bridge, and there was no need to wire in another switch out here. The lights joined the control center for the whole house. These things are also very helpful in a place where running more wiring is either too difficult or unsightly. Places with concrete walls, for instance. You can literally just stick this unit to the wall, pair it with a smart light or a light with a smart control like this one, and you've got yourself a light switch. It works like a remote activated ceiling fan. And I'll repeat again, this thing makes its own power when you click it. It's crazy stuff and I had no idea it even existed. So I was glad to get a tour of such a cool house where a lot of it was on display. And I really appreciate the client and Harrison for letting me walk through with them. This stuff is going to continue to evolve. The next step is right around the corner and I'm sure that I'm gonna do more smart lighting videos in the future. But for now, what do you think? Are you as impressed with this kinetic switch as I am? Do you want color changing options in your lighting? Or are you an electrician and have other opinions on this topic? Please, let me hear about it down in the comments. I'm gonna link a bunch of the stuff seen here down in the description. Feel free to browse it. And remember that when you shop through these links, we receive a small commission at no extra charge to you. It helps us keep making videos and we greatly appreciate the support. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.